for analytical balance part two, you're going to have a known mass A. You're going to have a known mass B. Uh, it's up to you which one you use, either the mass balance or the, the part one value. And it's at a certain position that you know from your center of gravity experiment. You don't know C, and you need to figure out what makes the system balance. You're given the distances um, A, L, well, B, obviously, and you're also given the distance C. We want you to calculate the mass here. But we're going to make it harder for you, and we mean to make it harder. You could do all your calculations based on L. That you have torques from A, a torque going this way, and a torque from B, and a torque from C. And in other words, the torque from A has to balance the torque at B and C. If this pulls down the same amount that this is pulling up, it should be in balance. That's true, but that's too easy. So mathematically, we want you to put your datum over here. It says that in the lab manual. Do all your measurements from here. So you're going to have little a, little l, little b, and distance little c. Now, you have this. Okay? And to solve for two unknowns, you're going to have to sum up the forces and set torques, excuse me, set them equal to zero, and sum up the forces and set them equal to zero. Two equations, two unknowns. Simplify it as far as you can. And solve it analytically. Use these values as A. Okay? Don't carry the number 10 or 20 or whatever it is through to the end. Okay? Do it analytically. And when you're all done, you should have C is equal to something divided by something where all these values are just A's and B's and B's and um, whoop, not capital C, C and L, okay? Then you can plug in the numbers and get your answer.